Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video on the Lenovo Legion 5. So there are a lot of requests for VR uh, benchmarks. So we're going to go ahead and run the Steam VR performance test here. Uh, and I also wanted to mention that this laptop does support 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz memory. I recently upgraded it today. Uh, the, the, this RAM in here is the original 16 gig RAM that came with it. So those are two 8 DIMMs, but I put two 16 gig DIMMs in here, and you can see the 1650 Ti is going to work on the Steam VR benchmark. So you can see the left and the right eye, it's rendering here. Uh, we'll see what the result is and see if it's capable of doing VR. Uh, you can see the CPU, all 16 threads are, well not all 16 threads, but it, gaming takes about, you can see uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, a little bit of five, about five cores or five threads are being used right now for the VR benchmark. Uh, and if those looking at the, the latency or curious about the latency on the RAM, there you go. 32 gigabytes of memory at 3200 megahertz because that's about 1600. And the timings on this is actually better than the stock RAM. The stock RAM was cast latency 22. This new RAM from uh, Kingston HyperX. So those who want the exact uh, type of RAM that I'm using, it's HyperX from Kingston. It's a 32 gig kit, so two 16 gig uh, SODIMM modules, uh, and it's one T command rate. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for a for laptop because it's 1.2 volts at 3200 megahertz, which is actually very good. Usually on desktops, to achieve 3200 megahertz. Uh, you would run it at 1.35 volts, uh, but the cast latency would be lower. So the latency would be like cast latency 16 or 18 or even 14, uh, depending on how high end the RAM is. But this is pretty good RAM, uh, and it says Intel XMP certified, but right here it's running on an AMD 4800H at the advertised speeds, 3200 megahertz cast latency 20, 1.2 volts, 1T. So that's pretty good. And there we go. So there's the results on the test and now because this is a laptop it has the integrated graphics listed there um, but the reality is that it was using the GTX 1650 Ti uh, the proof was that when you look down here you see that most of the rendering was done off of this this was the heavy load was on the 1650 Ti that's just the, the nature of running it off of a laptop because laptops because of Nvidia Optimus and the way the operating system uh, goes to the viewport the viewport on the embedded display port uh, which is basically the laptop screen is is hard wired to the uh, radeon vega apu or the in integrated graphics chip so that's why it's always going to report it like that but it was so you can ignore this uh gpu amd radeon graphics it's actually the 1650 ti's results and you can see it's in green ready so it is vr capable so i hope that uh answered the questions I got on a previous video from a couple of viewers asking me to do, show VR performance. So if you want to do VR, I would say it's in green, so it's it's VR capable. Uh, for those, for reference, 1650 Ti is about, it's somewhere between the 1060 and the 1070. For those who are familiar with the GTX 10 series, the Pascal GPUs, the 1650 Ti, it's Turing, but it's more... It's a little bit better than a 1060 in a laptop, but a little bit worse than a 1070 in a laptop. So it's kind of like a Radeon RX 5500M. So this would also be a similar result for the 5500M. So both both of these, they're, they're considered entry level to mid-range uh, discrete graphics and laptops. But honestly, guys, you got to keep in mind that GPU performance in laptops does not scale that well like if you get if you take a 2080 and stick it in a laptop it's not going to perform as well as it does in a desktop so the performance leap kind of like falls off or it only scales almost like logarithmically as opposed to linearly in desktops so that's why to be honest if i was going to purchase a laptop with the intent of like gaming on it i wouldn't go beyond like a 1660 ti or even a 2060 i think anything around that line is perfectly fine um, anything that's higher end than that like a 2070 in a laptop or a max q those things are overkill because they'll become outdated too quickly especially this year 
uh, or even early next year when they release like the next generation stuff in laptops. So I wouldn't really wait around for uh, a 2070 or 2060 to show up in one of these. To be honest, I think that the 1650 Ti or the 1660 Ti would be perfectly fine for a laptop. And if you truly wanted to, to run a super high-end graphics card, like a 2080 or something, then you, you're better off building a desktop for that sort of application. So I hope you guys found this video informative, uh, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.